Hello. Probably uh, most of you know me already, so Ooh. I won't spend any time introducing myself. And I'm going to have a talk about Lightning updates. Uh, and the main problem, I need to update 100 millions of clients every few minutes, every, every once in a while, pretty quickly. How do I do that? OK, uh, typically, when you update something in application, it's an executable with your code. Or it's something like resources, images, data, database, textures. But generally, it's just some state. We can just call it a state. And state of the application should be, ideally, immutable. Users shouldn't change it. Also, it should be consistent and secure. So you know if it's both tempered with, et cetera. And because it's a state, you can represent it as a value or a data structure. OK. So uh, imagine you have like a map of string to strings and a database, and you want to do something with it, and you want to update it. That's the major problem you want to do, actually. You don't want to like go into files or something. You actually want to do this. So you can, every time you update something, you can just replace everything. But if you have a database of a few hundred megabytes, you cannot do that, actually, pretty frequently. So you can do like additional overlay. But then you have uh, it, it grows, and it will never like shrink, and it can be problematic. So you need to differential update. OK, so state is just state for difference between previous state, and et cetera. So difference is just a cell in a matrix or a graph, an upgrade graph. An upgrade graph is some version A goes to version B and goes to version C, et cetera. But in reality, it's not that simple. <coughs> You don't have a user on the latest version. Sometimes you have uh, users also on different versions. So the graph should represent that, because you don't want your user to download million, uh, thousands of files. So basically, it can look like this. The arrow represents times. Okay. Or shortcut. And from A to E, how do you find a way? You need to like have some information how to find what to download, what to get. But uh, if the uh, state is immutable, and I like also files on web immutable, the previous inform uh, state won't tell you how to get to future state. There's like easy way. But so you need to find that. So you need to like actually, you have only B and E. And how do you know? You don't, you don't see the graph. You know, maybe like there's like something, but how do you get it? Or you can always store the information into state itself and go backward in time somehow. So you go back and then find a way to your previous node and then you apply the uh, path in the uh, in other direction. OK, how do you represent uh, such links uh, uh, between states? It can be a file name, also like, some, uh, like something like a to b dot bin or version, version, or it can be identifier of the content. You can hash the content and name file, this is my file. Hash value is kind of like pointer. It's a unique value for its content. It will never change. Uh, you can use it as uh, other, uh, other, for other thing content. So you, you know only hash, and you, you will always find the content. You can also check. And also, you cannot change the data. So your algorithm needs to work with it. And it's also it's really easy to cache, because it will never change. And caching is the hardest problem of computer science. So and also give you trans transitive trust. So if you have A pointing to B, so you can trust also to C. So let's say like, we have three update states representing some, something. We are updating data structure, whatever. And information about them are like smaller, just information. What's the hash in, in, inside? So the subject I'm updating, the, the map I showed you, is the subject representing by the metadata. And between each state, there is a delta file containing this patch and information about previous state, because it's only like a few, few, few bytes, let's say. And some metadata can contain also link to actual serialized uh, subject, aka snapshot. It's just map 
serialized into file, so you can download it and do like clean update. So if you unpack snapshot, you will get subject. If you have subject and apply two deltas, you will get another subject. And if you unpack snapshot and apply delta, you will get subject. This is like kind of easy. So how do you get obtain subject? You don't have anything. You have clean up without any uh, content. And you somehow know that C is the latest version. So you will download it. And you know information about previous uh, link. So you can download the uh, delta file. By it, you will get also the uh, metadata, because it's there in it. Then you will download another delta file. You will get the metadata. You will download the snapshot, deserialize it. You will get subject, apply delta, subject, subject. And you are updated to the final version. And you can check the hash of the subject, and it's match, because it must match. Otherwise, there was some problem on network or something. So we need to model this graph as the vocabulary types for our algorithms. We will start with nouns, values. Hash, the pointer. It's just a bunch of bytes. It can be stat array, stat span, or bytes. But I don't like it because it's not ty uh, type safe. Someone else will put into uh, API some other array of bytes, which doesn't mean hash. So I prefer to have some like strong type. But it's also like quite tedious to uh, properly implement it, because you need to implement a lot of functions, comparison, uh, iterators, and many more. And for hash view, same. And also for comparison, thanks to Tony. Uh, Back in the end. It can, be much, uh, it can be done much easier. You can just uh, inherit from stat array. It will give you everything you want. It behaves exactly the same, but it gives different meaning to the array. It's, now it's hash of some size. And you can implement, like, uh, you can take all the constructors from it. If there, are, if there are, you can implement your own constructor explicit from view and just uh, put it there with strategies too. And hash view is just span. It's implicit uh, from uh, hash. There is a comparison because we don't have one. Uh, we will get this one soon, hopefully, and uh, uh, equality. And then we can have also like another layer in the structure. We can have tagged hash, which is hash of specific meaning, like MD5, SHA1, and tag hash view. It's like just five li lines of code, and it will get everything you need. And then you have like crypto or like tag, which are, represent length of the uh, hash, and you can create your SHA1 hash, SHA256 hash, etc. Okay, the implicit conversion rules are simple. From array, you can go to span. From hash value, you can do hash view, tag value, etc. Explicitly, you can go in other direction. But explicitly, you need to actually ask for it. So it's visible in code. So another, uh, another non is met metadata object, which is representing the node in the graph. It contains hash of some type, I don't know. It's simplified of the subject I'm, we are updating to. Color of the graph. So if you have like multiple branches or something, you can, or multiple graphs, you, you, will, you can easily distinguish them. And uh, time when it was created and links to previous delta and links optional to a snapshot. And then uh, uh, this is not part of the serialized uh, data, but hash of the metadata itself and its bytes, because it's useful. Delta link is uh, time of previous uh, node, uh, hash of the delta uh, of the object itself, and distance to snapshot, which is mean like uh, distance uh, to closest snapshot uh, in the graph, so you can actually search for path in the graph. And comparisons, which can be defaulted. OK. Then delta is just metadata. And I need to drink. Delta is just metadata of previous object and bytes of patch, because I don't, I don't need to understand the patch, because I, I will do it generically. Snapshot is just vector of bytes serialized. So identifier, which is, means uh, like a rich pointer. It's not just object, uh, but also its type. So it's, there is 
hash, some, some tag representing type of the object, comparison operator only by hash. We don't need to compare type because there will be ne probably never any conflict. And operator slash, so we can uh, easily uh, create maybe URL to download it from it, which is just prefix and uh, hexadecimal representation of the hash. And we have types, which is metadata, snapshot, delta, and alias. Alias is special type of metadata. We have the graph, and somehow your client needs to know what's the latest version. That's the alias, because it cannot be addressed by its content as a hash. It needs to be addressed by its name, because it changed. So let's say this is beta version of our for beta users, and this is something for stable users. And when we are sure this is no longer uh, uh, like considered beta, we can just uh, store this metadata of C into alias uh, and make this. And that's how our users will find. It's like just a name of file, they will discover it, download it. That way they will get the metadata and can do the update. So alias is just copy. Uh, it, it's not that space by its hash. And, uh, or you can hash the name and have like different suffix. And you can also like uh, you need to change because it, different suffix is useful for caching uh, uh, rules because caching is hard, obviously. <laughs> OK, the alias, we need to somehow get bytes we download from internet, decentralize them into object. Object can be metadata, subject, or delta. So any object is just variant, metadata, delta, or snapshot. And we have like three helper functions to obtain the content from it. If we ask, so we don't, it's just a nicer bit. OK, and wrapper, uh, let's say it's protobuf. We use protobuf for serialization. It can be JSON, it can be XML, whatever. It's just uh, object type, uh, metadata, patch, snapshot, and signature, which can contain a uh, cryptographical signature. OK, verbs. We have all nouns we need for updating. We now have verbs. So we need to unwrap and validate uh, some object we got it's uh, based on an identifier and some bait, uh, bytes as content, and we will get uh, any object from it. So we will deserialize it somehow, doesn't, ma doesn't matter how. Then we will uh, check if it's metadata type, and if it has metadata and signature, because metadata needs to have signature, because metadata can be also alias, and alias is not addressed by its content, so we, we cannot be sure if it's secure. Then we will call function validate metadata with ID, the uh, data from uh, signature and content. Then uh, if it's delta, uh, we need, uh, delta needs, needs to contain also metadata, but also patch. And then we will call validate delta. Same thing with snapshot, but snapshot is just on, we will call validate, and that's all. Otherwise, if something else, something's wrong, we will just throw exception. OK, uh, we will validate met metadata. We will take identifier, content of the uh, metadata itself, signature, and whole wrapper, including the signature, and that's metadata. So if it's not metadata, uh, based on the ID and based uh, or alias, we ask for something else. If it's, uh, we need to calculate hash of the content itself, not with, not with the wrapper. Uh, and uh, if the type is metadata and hash is not same, then we will throw exception. Then uh, we need uh, to check the signature against the hash and trust the decrease. Otherwise, we will throw exception. Then we will deserialize the metadata into result. We will put uh, additional hash of the content we just calculated. And original bytes, uh, we will uh, serialize them again because we, need, we will need them later. OK, delta is similar. We will take ID, metadata bytes, and uh, patch bytes. If we ask for something else, again, same error. We will calculate hash of the metadata bytes and patch bytes together. And conf uh, uh, confirm if it's correct. And then we will deserialize metadata. Just deserialize. We don't need to validate them, because you can be sure. Uh, calculate hash of the metadata, put them, and put previous uh, metadata 
into delta and serialize the patch again back, uh, back there. OK, validating snapshot is the easiest way. We will just check the type, calculate the hash, uh, confirm it's correct, and create snapshot of its content. I know I, I'm doing copies, uh, but yeah. And update algorithm itself. We have the uh, graph, and we need to somehow update it to subject C. And ap application will point at C because it's like having some state, and the state represents some subject. So basically, it's in application in memory, it's like this. The graph itself is no longer matter, but this is the part of the graph kind of still there. And when, when we update, we point on something else and then uh, release the previous state and subject. And again, again. For that, we have type uh, state representing metadata and uh, type T uh, updating subject. But it's not a value. And it's quite kind of controversial. I'm using shared pointer of const T. Uh, we'll get that hash uh, of the uh, metadata color of the graph, uh, timestamp of the metadata. And I'm using shared const t as a value type, because uh, it, it can, cannot form cycles, so it won't leak. That's the biggest problem with share pointer. Also, uh, it's const t, so it's immutable. So it behaves as a, you know, don't need to lock in uh, in your uh, application only to access the share pointer. And uh, it behaves as a value type and saves memory because uh, every, the whole algorithm will work as copy on write. OK, so we have uh, some graph. We are in state B. And we somehow know we are going to update to G. So first thing we need to do is download G. And by downloading it and parsing it, you will, uh, we will get information about E and F. And then we need to somehow choose which one we download next. And because they are sorted by time, and the graph uh, always have a link to previous node, we can uh, look for the node uh, in time closest to our uh, payload we already have. So we will download E. And then we will download C. And then there is a direct connection to B. And the graph look, look like this. So how do we select it as a code? We will have uh, metadata of current, uh, of which, which we have downloaded. We have current state. Maybe we don't. Maybe it can be empty. And we will return identifier object we, we need to download next. So if we have state and a color is different of the metadata we got, so we somehow download different branch or someone push uh, like forced uh, a full update to a whole user base, so just start the graph again from scratch. We will mark a state, a current state as a null pointer. It's empty, and from now it's just like full update. If we still have this current state and uh, metadata timestamp is older than uh, our current state, someone is pushing older update, which means also uh, we need to do full update because it's actually it's, uh, it's downgrade for us. So we cannot do the algorithm with differential, differential update. Then, uh, if it's uh, current state uh, is null pointer, we are doing, doing full update. And uh, we don't have any delta links from current metadata. Uh, then uh, there must be a snapshot uh, hash, which is like point of the whole serialized uh, uh, snapshot. Then we return identifier of the snapshot with type of snapshot. If we do have state, uh, we look at the delta links, filter them uh, if they are eligible, uh, based on uh, that their timestamp is uh, bigger than my uh, state timestamp. So we are not going to backward in, uh, like behind us. And uh, we will choose the smallest value and look at its hash and return delta uh, hash identifier of the delta with the hash we obtained. And if uh, that didn't work, or we just look at uh, delta links, if we are going to full update delta links, and we will sort them by distance to snapshot. Because we are actually looking for the closest snapshot, so we will download as, much, uh, as less as possible. 
and we'll return delta type because we are already looking for delta because there is no like full update we need to do partial update but then we will do full update and etc so we have like vector of any object which can be rep represent our path through graph of all objects and we need function which take identifier and gives us any object so there will be some downloading it's some like coroutine, uh, I don't care uh, what, what library you will use or what framework. It's just some, some sort of task which will give you a vector of bytes. Maybe use Quill or something, whatever. Uh, there are some requirements it's, uh, and there is like a function which will, every time you call it with some argument, it will give you a coroutine uh, for, uh, for this specific object to download. And there is a function convert to object which will take identifier, the uh, function which will generate the coroutines for you and uh, it will return task which will give you any object and it's kind of easy it's just fetched uh, the ID wait for result unwrap it and uh, return uh, object itself or exception so fetch path will take a current state uh, hash or name so we yeah, can do also full up, like, update based on the name, like give me a latest version. And uh, the lambda or function which will give you the coroutine. And then return a task which will give you path to graph to your state. We start empty and there is like wrapper which only like do the uh, uh, convert to object. Maybe I... Maybe there's like some problem, but uh, basically you will ask for identifier and get the object uh, itself. If we are not, uh, if we don't have state, if we do have state and uh, target we are updating to, maybe we ask per, per, uh, for specific hash, is same as ours. We just return nothing because there's nothing to download. But if there is something to download. We convert, convert to identifier the tar uh, target, fetch the object, wait for it, and place it into path. Then there is an infinite uh, loop, and we will look always at the end of the path. We are, we are going backward from, mm -hmm. from now backward, like, uh, in, in, into past. We will look uh, if last object was metadata. We will get this pointer. And if we have state and uh, metadata hash and current state is same, then we can just return current path because we just download, uh, uh, we apply this uh, metadata. This happens if you uh, update to latest version and the latest version is already version you already have. And then otherwise you will select next based on the metadata and current state from previous function, fetch the object, wait for it, put it on a uh, path and loop it. If it's delta, you were asked for to download it it's in path. Then you will just look at previous metadata from the delta object itself and put it uh, back in path. And then if it's snapshot, then you just like, you can end up because uh, this is everything you need to do like full update in reverse because you have snapshot and maybe some like deltas, metadatas, etc. So state and uh, it's just state and path from end to M applied. Or it's just state delta, 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 metadata applied. Backward. So we have application which holds some state and uh, which holds some subject. And then uh, some other state uh, uh, point at the same subject. We will take it uh, like application works and then we have uh, maybe different thread of the updating. So we will take the state uh, as a share pointer and start the update process. We will get the delta, we will get uh, by its subject uh, two, and we hold uh, state to subject two, and we will get another delta, maybe it's longer update, we will get subject three, and now we need to switch st states. And suddenly uh, the update is visible, it's atomic, so your application doesn't need to care what's going uh, behind scenes. Your application just needs to take, take this is my uh, like current state and that's all. So update, update to is function which will uh, take atomic share pointer because you want to like atomically change it of current state, hash or name of target. 
uh, function which uh, like is used to download, which is provided by user because it's different by, based on environment on different platform is different mm -hmm. code. So and return task update uh, resulting update result. So we will load old state from the atomic pointer. So not anything can happen behind scenes, and then we will fetch path from the old state towards target with uh, our function fetch block. Await for uh, yeah. Await for a result. Then we will pipe it into fault, right? Put it uh, with old state and uh, some some factor apply apply update traits. I will show later. Which will apply the operation, uh, apply metadata, apply delta, apply delta, apply delta, apply snapshot, or you know, other oppositely. And it will give us new state. That's, that's updating one line. And then uh, if we uh, didn't have any old state and new state hash is same as old state, then we just already on latest version, we just checked and nothing, nothing was there. Otherwise, we will store new state into current state and return. Uh, Result, we just did it. Okay. Applied, uh, which is just update rates uh, for something uh, for T. Uh, we have like uh, some aliases and operator uh, call, which will take previous state and any objects from the path, and add to new state. It's just dispatch uh, with it because it's a variant. So we will call uh, implementation. So if it's uh, with state, if it's snapshot. We will just uh, create a new state and deserialize the snapshot bytes with provided traits, because are, every object is serialized differently. Like, if you have like a list of values, it's much easier than map of strings. And uh, provide empty metadata because uh, we will get, get that later. Share it uh, and return it. If it's delta, uh, we will take pre uh, previous uh, subject. Take the delta patch, uh, maybe it's immutable, and apply the patch itself. I don't need to care in update system how it's, uh, what type of patching you are using because it's different for each dat uh, data structure. And create new shared state. If it's metadata, we will calculate hash of uh, current state we are like in uh, during process and check if it's correct. We will ex uh, throw exception if it's not. And then uh, we will share uh, the uh, same, uh, same subject with new metadata as a new state. Update trace look like this. Uh, there, is, there must be function calculate hash for your subject type, which returns some hash type. You need to uh, have a function calculate difference between two subject, subjects if you are building the update, because it's great to have like building the update and uh, consuming the update in same code base. It's really easy to maintain them. And it will return a vector of bytes, which represents some patch, which is internal for the update rates, and the rest of the application doesn't need to know. Apply difference is opposite op operation, which will take subject, span of bytes, and apply something and give you subject type. And serialization of subject will give you bytes. That's for the snapshots. And the serialization will take bytes and give you subject. No, uh, it's still. Uh, I'm working on my own copy of uh, shared oh. pointer. So if it fell, application uh, is still working uh, correctly. It's atomic uh, atomic change, so it's fine. OK, and user facing API, if you like something like more high level, is that you have like application uh, points at state and subject. And uh, there will be some update, as I showed before. And then uh, you start some task with some subject. Because uh, let's say uh, I'm working in AV, and you want to do like AV scan of your hard drive. You will take database of all definitions and uh, start doing uh, the scan. Meanwhile, the application will update. And normally, if you didn't use shared pointers, uh, and after the, after the update itself, it will uh, dangle. That's the reason I'm using shared pointers. 50 minutes? Yeah, OK. Yeah, on time. 
So, and then you can start another task, which will already have the latest one. So uh, you shouldn't have like uh, some state which is always there. You should always ask for some handler, give me latest state, and you are safe. You don't need to have some fancy locking and just hold it. So the uh, user-facing API is stream containing the atomic share pointer with current state. It starts empty. Function update to which uh, will get like target and the function to download return the update result. We already show it. I already show it to you. Then there is a get function which will give you share pointer to your, your type. It will load current state. If it's uh, empty, it will give you nothing, obviously. And then uh, return the subject. Uh, then uh, serialization create state uh, if you are like in some state and you, are, uh, you want to be persistent between like restart of computers or your application, you need to be able to serialize it. That's the reason why it's good to have also the code, uh, code for serialization there. So you will just load the state, call some serialization function, serialize it. Serialization state uh, is uh, serialization state function I will take the share pointer to the state and return a vector of bytes. If it's empty, nothing to serialize. Uh, and otherwise, it will just concat somehow uh, metadata bytes and the uh, subject with the update rate itself. Decentralization is similar. You will just take uh, some bytes, if optionally, uh, because I'm using it also in constructor, and load function can give you null opt. There is nothing. And return state. Uh, if it's not, it will return empty. And then you split the uh, metadata and subject as you like concatenate somehow before, uh, we create new path with snapshot and unwrap of, uh, and validate uh, the, uh, of the bytes. So we will get the object itself. It will be uh, metadata, and there will be a content of the uh, snapshot. And then you use same fault, not right fault, but left fault, uh, over empty state with the path and with same trait you use for updating, and you will get state of your application every time you start it. And default constructor will give you empty empty stream. And if you provide optional of, uh, with span of bytes, then maybe you uh, you have a function load binary file, which can give you, give you a span of bytes or empty optional. And then you will feed it to the serialization and store it as a current state at the start of the application. And uh, from perspective of user, it looks like this. You have the stream of your type and some update traits to update the type. Uh, you will load file content from config <coughs> pin in this case. And you have function update, uh, which uh, will always update to latest, which will be run <coughs> in, uh, in, uh, in background every few minutes or hours, days. And at the start, you will call it initially. You will just check for the latest version. You can schedule it somehow. And every time you do something with the value, with the object, you just ask for the share pointer, do something with it, and you're done. So I need to update an object of 100 million of clients quickly and whenever I want. From perspective of client, it's simple. And the problem itself is actually I need to deliver a small value identifier of the hash to clients, maybe via push notifications. So client knows the latest version and download it. And uh, I showed you that you can model algorithm into code. Nicely, you have verb, nouns, makes sense, it's easy. Then strong typing is kind of useful. And also it's fun, obviously. <laughs> and uh, I have a small bonus, because we have time. And imagine your uh, object is stat map of file system paths to a uh, vector of bytes. Like representing virtual file system, and uh, you have some BFI trait which will calculate hash of whole virtual file system somehow uh, by updating some hasher. Uh, then you have like difference which will look for differences like addition or removal and updates of each file, and uh, create need a needed uh, patch files with uh, some <coughs> BSD in this case. And uh, then it uh, compressed itself because uh, the patch should be small. And uh, apply difference is just opposite uh, uh, opposite algorithm of it. So we'll take subject and patch 
deserialize it uh, and apply every change to your current co uh, copy. And that's. And then that you need also serialization, which you just serialize everything, compress it, uh, decompress it, and and that's how you will get really simple Git. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Any questions? Ah, Tony. Oh, sorry, you were first. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier about the shared pointers and why you chose them. Um, but, I'm yeah. just curious if you could clarify about the, the uh, circular um, means. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you have shared pointer of const t, uh, you cannot actually modify the uh, t to contain pointer to uh, itself or some something which will create a cycle. And uh, that's how you prevent any leaks because it will always, uh, there will be no cycle, so it will always uh, release when a last reference will go away. Tony, you had a question? Um, when you have a node G that points back to F and E, right? I don't know. You've got the, your deltas, G, mm -hmm. yeah. and then if it goes to E and F backwards, yeah. and then you get E because it's farther back. Yeah. You don't know, how do you know that F doesn't have like a direct step all the way back? I don't know. But I know uh, only thing about the uh, uh, graph that uh, there is always a path at least to previous node in each node. And uh, you can create uh, like no, like every hour you can create a uh, jump, twelve hours back. But uh, it, uh, if you go always to time uh, timestamp which is uh, sh uh, larger than uh, than timestamp, but are you uh, are, uh, then you will always find way to your uh, path. Yeah. So I, I I'm not searching the shortest path obviously. I'm looking for the simplest path uh, to uh, like. Yeah, it's a good path. It's not guaranteed to be the best. Yeah. Path. Uh, you can create good path if you create like uh, the uh, shortcuts. Like uh, if you create like uh, every hour, to twelve hours every day, you will create uh, one week back, and every week or uh, twice a week you will create month back, maybe. And then you will always find possibly optimal path. So if the paths are strictly nested, they don't cross over each other. I think going as far back as possible is guaranteed to be. Best. Yeah, yeah. It will uh, it will always uh, finish, and you will always find what you are looking for. Any other question? JF, no question? No question. Okay. Thank you for attending. <laughs>